Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joni Young. If you're new here, thanks for joining. So here we're going to be painting another fantasy landscape today on a black primed canvas, which is 12 by 18, using a large mop brush or any blending brush of your choice. We're going to begin and I'll go over all these colors first. We've got electric purple, phthalo blue, turquoise, white, yellow, neon orange and pink, and magenta. I'm going to take a dry mop brush, titanium white, and start blending a soft circle continuously in the center of the canvas. Then I'm going to take some yellow and start to go over just part of, partially over that white, leaving the center the brightest. And then I'll gradually go into the orange. Now you can use any blending brush that you want and any colors that you want. You don't necessarily have to have neon. Um, I just really like neon paint. And I'm going to take a little bit of pink now. And you don't have to wash your brush off in between. We can just go from one color to the next. I'm just going to start tapping lightly to create some bushes and foliage on the side. I've got a mixture of pink and orange on my brush. And I'm going to start to soften around. I'm going to switch over to a large filbert type of blending brush now. I've got a little bit of water on it, no paint at all. And I'm just blending this side of the sides of this circle out just to make it look a little bit softer. And the next thing I want to do is take some more of this pink and I'm going to really start to intensify the colors now. So just full on pink around and around, getting it blended really nicely. Now into the white and into my phthalo blue with a little bit of that electric purple. Now it's got a bit of a shimmer to it. It's almost uh, like an iridescent um, sheen to it, which is really pretty. Though I notice mixing it with a regular uh, heavy bodied acrylic paint, it will lose that shimmer. So you might want to just use it for a filter or a final glaze over something. But it but anyways, it's a really, really pretty color. So I am blending it in with more of my phthalo blue. I've got a little bit of um, cobalt blue as well on my palette. So you can use both of those blues or just one or the other. Um, all these colors look really nice together. I have picked up a little bit of my turquoise and just going to start incorporating that And I'm not waiting for the colors to dry first. I'm just going right over top, blending one into another. Now I'm going to switch over to my large stipple brush, tapping into the purple, loading up my brush with that purple, a little bit of blue on there, and I'm going to start tapping some little bushes here along the side. Now I'm going to go into my pink and I'm going to add some of that over top. So here it is right here, it's from Arteza. And you can see it's got that pearl iridescent shimmer to it. It's very pretty. And it's not a heavy bodied one, it's more of a fluid one. It's kind of in between actually because it's it's still uh, pretty thick as it comes out. It's not as thin as um, other uh, acrylics that are in those little bottles. I'm going to tap in to some of the white now with the purple and I'm going to tap very lightly wherever I want to have some little highlights and softer 
tones of purple here and then I'm going to even go up around the sides and kind of make it look like there's a frame of flowers just growing up and around this oval. Now what I'm going to do is tap down towards the bottom and you'll see what I'm going to do later on with part of that. I'm going to go over on this side now. This brush, I know you guys always ask me what it's called. I, it doesn't have a name on it and I can no longer find it in the store. I got it years ago at Michael's and they don't uh, have them there anymore but it's probably the best um, stipple type of brush that I've ever had. So here I'm taking my large flat brush, it's number 11, and I'm just pulling back and forth over part of those bushes to instantly make it look like water. I'm just going to create some reflective ripples and light in the water, light and shadow, pulling and blending, and then pulling and flicking the paint off of those bushes to make it look like a reflection in the water. So you want to go down and then you want to go lightly across and that gives you that blurry water look. I'm going to continue tapping, turning, and creating um, some movement in and direction in these flowers or little bushes along the side. You, know, you don't have to use a flat brush. You could use a filbert, a flat brush, a little stipple or mop brush, whatever you want for this. And then I'm going to try and add a few little waterfalls in here and see how that looks. So I'm just pulling with a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of purple in my brush, pulling and curving over and then flicking down. I'm going to do them from um, different angles and different heights. Some of them are going to be longer and shorter. And then just pull and blend side to side right at the base of them. Now I've got a clean mop brush here. It's actually a makeup brush that I'm using. I got a whole set of them on Amazon and they make wonderful brushes. I've loaded it up by tapping it lightly into my turquoise paint. No water at all. And I'm going to just add some little bushes in here. I really like how all these colors look together. And I'll add some up here too. Now I'm going to go right into my phthalo blue. And like I said earlier, there might be a little bit of cobalt or ultramarine blue in there that it doesn't matter. You can use any blue you want and it will work for this painting. And I'm tapping over in the corner. I want it to look darker in the corners. So I'm being very generous with the paint and tapping lightly here. I don't want to push too hard or I risk pushing into the turquoise that's applied pretty thick on there as well and then I'll end up um, blending the blue too much into the turquoise. So pulling gently and flicking down and then across for those reflections. I'm going to add some over here on the bottom right as well on the side and then going up the edge a little bit. So when you create a dark sort of a frame vignette around the outside of your painting it helps to draw your eye into the center of the canvas. And we want that for this painting because that's where the light is and that's where our eyes are naturally drawn to. So taking some more of that blue, maybe a little bit of purple. Add some more bushes along the edge. And then pull lightly across. a little bit more up in the corner there where I want it to be a bit darker and I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see how I'm going to create some branches that that come out here and I'm going to switch over to a fan brush now because it will be easier for me to get those skinnier branches that I want 
So I'm turning and loading into that beautiful purple there with the magenta and the blue. I'm going to tap and curve my brush. I want those hangy, cascading type of branches that I love so much. It helps to create a mood, I think, when you have those drippy kind of branches that are just hanging over. So just pushing and tapping with a fan brush. Now you can use any size you want, it really doesn't matter. Um, I've got one of my largest ones. Now here I'm going to start making some drips. So I'm just pretty much dunking my brush right in the water, going straight over to the top of the canvas and I'm pushing gently off the top so I'm squeezing that water out of my brush. It still has the blue paint in it and it's also running down along the blue paint that I just applied for those branches so it's just going to give it a, a very natural um, tree branch and tree trunk look. I love the way it just flows organically like that creating some very natural looking trees in a forest. So while I'm letting those drip down the canvas, I'm going to come in on this side and start adding a few little branches. And I'm going to switch over now to my long liner brush. And I'm going to use some water and twirl it around into the magenta and the blue and the purple. And I'm going to very lightly pull and wiggle, creating some little branches and tree trunks. Now you'll need a lot of water in your liner brush, especially when you're using a long one like this. It really is key in helping that paint flow easily and seamlessly because the liner brush can be your worst enemy or your best friend. If you don't know how to use it, you're going to hate it. So water is uh, the trick you need. If it's not, if the paint's not flowing easily, People, students sometimes think that they need to go back for more paint, but that's not the case. It's actually more water that you need. Unless it's looking see-through. Uh, if you don't want your paint to look transparent, then you need a little bit more paint and water. So I just took a little bit of turquoise to create some stairs along the side there. Now I'm over to a quarter inch or a half inch, I should say, a flat brush where I'm going to slide in few little lines here for some steps but I think the paint is a bit too wet underneath for me to get the light that I want on these on the tops of these stairs so it's something I'm probably gonna have to uh, work at and come back to a little bit later on usually my paint is drying really fast especially with how hot it's been lately um, but there must be a lot of humidity um, in the air lately because even though it's warm it's kind of muggy and that moisture that's in the air is uh, keeping my paint wet without me having to uh, work too quickly I don't have to spray my canvas off um, so it's kind of nice um, but sometimes I like to layer over things quickly and I can't in this case so if you guys are having that problem then you want to just kind of have something you can dry it off with I like a hair dryer or you can just come back to it a little bit later on and wait for it to dry I know most of you guys have problems with your paint drying too fast um, here I'm just going over my colors again for my my son here I went over my white and I'm going over with some more of the orange now just to intensify the color a little bit more and then some yellow now I'm mixing the yellow with a little bit of that neon orange I want it to have a little bit more warmth to it. Um, but yeah, if you have a problem with your acrylic paint drying too fast, and I know you guys do because that's probably the most popular question I get. Um, you guys ask me what am I mixing with my acrylic to keep it from drying too fast. Uh, and I'm, I don't use anything, just a little bit of water if I need to. So I'm adding some reflections, lines, pulling back and forth with my light colors that I use for the sky, mainly the yellow, the orange, and the white, and adding a few more little waterfalls back there. So 
So waterfalls are very, very easy to paint and they can add so much to a painting, especially a uh, fantasy painting or if you like um, nature and uh, landscape, forest type of uh, paintings. I've got a lot of videos. Oh my gosh, I have so many videos on painting waterfalls. Uh, check out both my playlists that I'll link below, one for learning to paint in acrylics for beginners and also my fantasy playlist. So I'm just adding some more of those sun sunset colors here in the water. Whatever color I've got in the sky, I'm gonna to add to the water. And I'm mixing up a little bit of my purple, blending it in with a little bit of that bright pink. So I don't want to have uh, just really bright highlights in the water and then all of a sudden super dark around it. So I'm kind of gradually going from light to dark. Now I've got a tiny little mop brush. I'm going to make light pink by blending white with my neon pink. And I'm going to create some little tiny bushes over here. Tapping very lightly around that little waterfall there on the left. So it's important to have a few different sizes of every brush that you have. That's um, my recommendation and my advice. If you want to use a fan brush, which you're really going to need if you're a landscape artist, um, you want to have two or three different sizes. Same with a liner brush, a mop brush, flat brushes, filbert brushes, all of them guys. And I'm doing the same now, adding some little bushes along the side here, mixing a bit of orange, pink, and white. And then adding some more highlights and reflections in the water. And then I'm just going to try tapping a little bit, really lightly here, again with my bright colors, white, yellow, orange. Now I'm going to take some of my green, blue, sap green, phthalo blue, and neon yellow, or lemon yellow. I've also got a lemon yellow that acts pretty much like a neon yellow, and it's from Arteza. So I'm going to tap in some deep sap green bushes here and little branches. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight, not very much, so more of my yellow than the green, and I'm just going to lightly tap closer to the center of the canvas where the light would be hitting it, and I might add a little bit over here too. I'm going to mix up some more of that color. And then start adding just a little bit of it up here. So I've got, of course you guys probably have seen it already because I would have posted it before this one. Unless you're a patron of mine, this will be available for pa my patrons first before anybody else. Um, I did a collaboration with my friend Charlotta Sophia where you can watch in time lapse a side by side of us both painting a fantasy portal. This one is mine and you'll have to go check hers out if you haven't yet or my video. She 
has a video of both of us painting on her channel and I do as well so I'll add the link below it's really fun to watch and you can see how they turned out so I added some more drips there on the right side and I'm coming in with more of magenta mixed with a little bit of my green for some branches and a tree trunk here on the side and a few more here I'm going to take some more of my turquoise now and carefully try to add a little bit more light onto these stairs and then I'm going to add some smaller ones that kind of just look like they're going to wrap around the corner there leading off to who knows where. Maybe there's a little castle or a cottage somewhere waiting for us. I'm going to take more of my magenta with a little bit of water on my brush, of course, to help flow. And just pull up a little tree. Now I've got another mop brush. And I'm going to take some more of my magenta. And I'm going to tap in some pretty little bushes down here. And then I'm going to take some more of my bright neon pink. And I'm going to load my brush up by tapping lightly into it. We'll add a little highlight. And add a few on this side too, I think. I'm just adding a little bit more of my purple and white and then over to another small mop brush I'm going to make a light bluey purple color blue pink and white here and I'm going to add a few little bushes back here because that light violety color is complementary to the yellow and the peachy orange we've got. I'm going to take a bit more pink with my white and just build these layers up a little bit more. I'm going to dust lightly, barely touching the canvas up and down. Just soften that up a little bit more back there. Let's take some neon orange with a little bit of white. Tap, tap, tap to get that nice poofy shape on the bottom of the brush. And I'm just going to go over part of that blended out light violet that we added. You see how they look really nice together. And add another waterfall or two. <laughs> I 
and a few more little pushes. And just gently back and forth, up and down for the reflection in the water before I start adding some lily pads. Okay, so I'm going to take some of my turquoise here, maybe a little bit of sap green, and just start tapping in a little bit of foliage here on the side of the stairs. And then just tapping and pulling short little brush strokes over to my liner brush a little bit of white orange and yellow I'm going to dab little lines and little dots And I'm going to keep doing this. This will kind of create that sparkly kind of a look in the water that's really, really pretty. And it's also going to help me build up my little water lilies. And then I'm going to add pinks and orange. So just light little pulls and flicks. Using my little flat brush again, I'm just going to soften and blend the outside edges. Okay, so I'm going to pull into my blue and pink and magenta here and create short little lines that are going to be my lily pads. So you want to make them a little bit longer and larger, closer to us in the foreground. And then if you want to have some that look like they're farther away, then you're going to have smaller ones that are going to be closer together. So lots of little dabs towards the waterfalls and a longer one spaced out a little bit more maybe towards us in the foreground. Then I'm just taking some neon yellow, maybe a little bit of turquoise in with that and I'll highlight the tops of some of these lily pads so it looks like the sunlight is hitting them. Just makes them show up better. I'm going to come in with um, a little mixture of titanium white and neon pink. A little bit of orange on there so I'm not blending them. I'm just applying it really thick and kind of swirled on the brush. And these are going to be some of the buds that haven't opened up yet. And then the ones that are opened up will do a few different little petals just by pulling and dabbing and then you can create a little stem for some of your water lilies using sap green and blue and just a little line that goes right into the water back to my little mop brush orange and white I'm gonna go over again adding some more of this fuzzy peach color that I've made it's like orange sherbet And right there, 
some of the paint underneath came off exposing the darker canvas but I'm just gonna leave that as is for now and I'm gonna come over here to the top corner on the right and maybe make some little stars or little orbs um, the paint is super wet because that's where I dripped off all of that water and paint so it's giving it a really really uh, blended look here and some of these are just kind of gonna get all blended in together and I'll have to go over them a bit but it's kind of neat because I'm getting those all those different hues of blues and purple and I'm just adding white in the center pulling and flicking little lines in every direction there's lots of different ways to paint stars you can't really go wrong you can just do like a little cross and then another line across I'm just using my finest, smallest liner brush that I have. It's the shortest one where I can have a little bit more control. So I've got a tiny filbert brush now and I'm going to take my blue and my turquoise, blend them together and add some color down here at the base and on some of the water lilies. Okay, back over to my little flat brush again. It's clean. I'm going to create some sun rays. So I'm going to start in towards the center, the brightest part of the sun, pull out and flick. But my paint is not completely dry, so I'm really taking a chance here. I tend to do this a lot. You think after all these years of painting, I'd have a little bit more patience. Um, so you'll see what happens in a minute and I have to correct it right there so I accidentally pulled in some of the wet paint blue green one of my dark colors so I just kind of wipe it off carefully and then go over it but what I normally do when I'm taking my time and I really don't want to run the risk of doing that is I wait for it to dry off or I just use my hair dryer that I have close by. So I want to give this a pretty sunlit glow and that's why I'm creating some of these sun rays here. Just adding a little bit more white in a very lightly blend back and forth and I'll do this quite a bit until um, I achieve the look that I want, the softness, I'm using a flat brush, two different sizes. And it's all about getting the right amount of water and paint because you want it to be transparent, translucent. Um, there are other whites out there that you can use that are a little bit more transparent. The only thing is I find with them, once they're dry, you can't even see it anymore. That's what I really like about titanium white and that's just my that's just my personal preference um, titanium white is the brightest white and I don't have to worry about it fading once it dries I just have done it for so many years I know how much water to add to get uh, the right color once it's it's dry so I'm just gonna start adding a few little bushes 
light little highlights. And a few more little lines back here so that we know the staircase is doesn't just stop right there it's going off into the distance and around a little corner So I'm just kind of softening here at the bottom of the stairs, deciding how much of a shadow I want or how low I want those stairs to go. Uh, it's totally up to you guys. You can have fewer steps. So what you guys didn't see is that I um, stopped videotaping just to dry this off. And I did think that it was dry. As you can see, I put my hand over it to check first. And I really thought it was dry, but apparently there was one spot that was still wet so there you can see I wiped it off and I'm just gonna go right back over with more of the white paint so it's very easy if you catch it in time you can correct it and you know even if you don't catch it in time and it's dried you can easily paint over it with some of the white and those sunset colors because I've had that happen before where I had a black mark and I hadn't seen it and I just painted over it and it's fine that's the one thing I really like about acrylic paint it's so versatile but I always leave in my little accidents and, and mistakes so that you guys can learn because that's a really big part of learning is how to fix things that go wrong. So I'm just working on these sun rays, the outer edges of them. I want this painting to feel very soft and warm. I don't want it to feel too streaky, so I'm softening where I want it to be a little bit more blurry just dry brushing over and I've got another little flat or a filbert brush here I think it's the smallest filbert brush I have and I'm just taking my warm colors my yellow and my orange and my white and I just decide right here to make a little door or a little portal just pulling up and creating a half circle and then I'm gonna accent that with a little bit of the pink and the orange making it look warmer and more inviting and then we'll make it land over here whereas before it was water so I'm just gonna add a bit of a path in here with those same colors pulling my brush side to side for that path and then going in for some sap green and some yellow and I'll just tap some little bushes and grassy mossy areas here around the sides making it look all nestled in there And I'm just adding a little bit more of my orange and my white here because I know it's going to dry darker. I want to make sure that we can see some light on that path there. And a few more highlights. A little bit of yellow and green and white.
Okay, so for the next few minutes, I'm going to be building up these sun rays, the next layers of them. Um, now that I spent some time down on another area of the painting, that little portal down there on the bottom left, the rest of the sky, those trees have hopefully had enough time to dry. Um, and I'm just going to finish up these sun rays and uh, add a few more flowers to uh, this little river down here. And then this painting will be all done. But yeah, I'm just using that same mixture, white, a little bit of water. I'm even just using my filter brush right now and I normally only use, I only like to use a flat end brush for creating sun rays. Um, but I'm just using my little flat brush here and it's working fine. Um, so I'm going to continue pulling and flicking and then softening. Yeah, I think out of everything that I've painted over the years, I always come back to these fantasy worlds that I love to create and I just lose myself in them. I lose track of time. I feel most content when I'm creating these and I hope that um, shows and you guys kind of pick up on that and I bring you some comfort and maybe some art inspiration and motivation while you're watching my videos. Uh, I love all the feedback. I thank you guys so much for all of your support, all of my patrons, um, and all the pictures that you guys are sending me over Instagram. So if you guys want to share your paintings from my tutorials, um, I recommend Instagram is the best way to do that. Um, I would rather not on Facebook um, only because my messenger is very glitchy. It hasn't been working. It's on and off. So most of the time I'm unable to even open up my messenger on Facebook. But Instagram, everything's been smooth on there. Um, you can send me emails too if you want. It's Joni Young Art, Instagram, and I'll leave, yeah, I'll leave all the links below for you guys. So I'm just adding a few more highlights here, maybe a few waterfalls. You can never have too many waterfalls. And I really am liking how this is coming together, but I want to add a few petals down here on some of these and some highlights. So I'm just going to pull just little lines to make it look like some of these water lilies are in full bloom. And then I'll add little bits of pink and orange to the center of them. Now you can use a liner brush for painting water lilies. You can also use just the corner of a flat brush. That works really well actually. And I'm just going to very lightly dust over with a bit of that yellow. Okay, this painting is all finished. I want to thank you guys again so much for joining me today. Please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more. I'll see you next time very soon in another video. Bye!